If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this super sexy episode of Mind <laughs> Pump. <laughs> Is that how it goes, Justin? Uh, uh, yeah, the Twilight sure. Zone. Oh, oh, the Twilight Zone. Oh, what? Come on, dude. Da, na, 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 yeah, na, na. that wasn't how yeah. it goes. So that's why I was confused. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, so for the first, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> that's it right there. Yeah, you know, when I was a kid, all someone had to do was play that music like that, like with their mouth, and I'd yeah. fucking cry. It's scared. Because you're scared? The Twilight Zone. Oh, what was the scariest Justin, one? you just got a gift right there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't scare yeah. me anymore. Okay. Yeah, do it all you want. All right. Um, so for the first 46 minutes, we do our introductory current events conversation we start off by talking about the twilight zone uh there was one episode in there that uh i thought exemplified the definition of meaning pretty well you're gonna be sharing it at your uh, big talk at spartan race yeah i'll be doing a talk at the spartan race next friday we talked about heaven and hell (laughs) justin (laughs) because why not you know let's get deep justin gets in the mosh pit hashtag team jesus holy shit yeah uh we talk about music violent and audiobooks for learning and creativity the assault on cryptocurrency right now might be a great time to buy mm. Bitcoin. I think it's below $9,000 at this moment, at the moment of this Everybody recording. Everybody convert. We talk about the 3D printed house. Oh, shit. Look it's out for everyone's housing going down. $10,000. <laughs> they printed it in one day. What? A whole house. Yeah. Uh, we also talk about the perfects. Versus the gangle tooths. <laughs> what? I don't remember covering that. You don't remember uh, that? I what talked about the gangles. The gangles, uh, bro. And the perfect. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, and we mentioned Green Chef, one of our new sponsors. Now, Green Chef, uh, organic, high quality food that you can buy that's delivered to your door that you can prepare. They've already prepped half of it for you, so you just got to cook it. Uh, it's a great thing to do with your partner. And there's sections you can go on. You can pick paleo, you can pick keto, you can pick carnivore apparently that's yeah. what justin said i ordered it it's, it's pretty, on its way if you go to greenchef.us forward slash mind pump you'll get 50 dollars off your first box we also talk about religion and human evolution i went off man a little bit on we, that we just can't stop part. can we then we get into the questions the first question was why is my instagram full of fitness women sipping on branch chain amino acids <laughs> So we talk about that a little bit. I actually mentioned Organifi Protein uh, in that uh, question. We are sponsored by Organifi. If you go to OrganifiShop.com, enter the code MindPump, you'll get a discount. The next question was, can you build muscle on a ketogenic diet? Or is it just a diet for losing body fat? Or can you actually pack on the size with that diet as well? You got to guzzle that fat. The next question was, what aspects of our careers do we find the most fulfilling we get touchy feely in that part of this episode Boys, we're honest we had a and group hug finally is weightlifting or resistance training beneficial for female hormone balance so if you're a little moody you might want to lift some <laughs> weights it'll help balance things out and i just oh, offended, that's the answer i just offended half of our audience yeah uh, also this month you get free access to our forum what? for enrolling in any of our maps Bundles. Now, I mentioned a couple times MAPS Anabolic. That is our foundational program. If you want to build muscle and strength and speed up your metabolism, or if you want to fix a damaged metabolism, that's the program for you. That's the one we recommend for almost anybody who's getting started with our MAPS programs. Now, it's also available in bundles where we combine it with some of our other MAPS programs, our most popular one being our Super Bundle, which is one year of exercise programming. So you follow one MAPS program, you go to the next MAPS program, you go to the next MAPS program. It's a full year. Like at the end of that year, you're going to look like a completely different person. You're mapped out. All of those bundles or all of the bundles that we do offer are available at mindpumpmedia.com and you will get access to our form for free for enrolling in any of those bundles. I was starting a drama yesterday. Drama's fucking cool people. Yeah. Like he reads something in a book and he's like, oh my God, dude, this is, you know, and he'll share it. He'll be like, oh, hey, dude, I share it to him. Like, you heard the new logic. Oh, and we're yeah. going, you know what I'm saying? Like we have great dialogue. He's a good person and I feel like I could ask him a favor and he would be totally do it. Where Bradley, I'm not sure about yet, yeah. dude. It, it's, I mean, he's a cool guy. He's also, he's a, he's a cool guy. I just think he's just probably been burned, you know, by a lot of people. Yeah. He's got, a, I think he's got a lot of stuff, that, but I think what's, what, why I'm drawn to him right now is I think I, I see again, I, I think I've said this before to you guys off air is that I, I really uh, can totally identify with what he's going through. <laughs> and I think we have a lot of things in common. I mean, we got t- almost 10 years on him. So, you know, 
I, I think he I have a lot of empathy for somebody like that because I don't I know what it's like to have experienced a lot of things that he's experienced, but what I don't know what it's like is to experience the amount of fame that he's experienced yeah, on that level and at that age and to have had a history in a past like he has. So you know, I, I'm I'm kind of fascinated to Sometimes wa- the worst thing is to get everything you th- you think you want. Oh, dude, that you know what I mean? your story that yep. you shared that you're going to share for Spartan. I, I already shared it again. I thought it was such a powerful, mm. fucking powerful. Mm. Man, I can't believe you never brought it up on the podcast mm-hmm. before because you got to share that story. That the um, the Twilight Zone. Story? Yes, the Twilight Zone. That's, so that's such a, a money uh, money story. Well, I, I'm a huge huge fan of the Twilight Zone when I was a uh, kid. Yeah. Huge fan, and I love the the writing of the Twilight Zone is just so brilliant. And there was one episode in particular. There's several episodes that really shook me, and and this was one of them. So there's this. So there's this this uh, this burglar or whatever looks like a bank robber and he's getting away from the cops and they shoot he's he's in a gunfight with the cops they shoot him he dies and then he wakes up and he's in this like hotel room and there's a man like an, an you know like an almost like an angel looking kind of person angelic looking man with this white suit on with this nice smile and he goes hey welcome you know I'm happy to have you here you know you, you made it and he's like what he's like wow and he's looking around you know, this real opulent hotel room and he's like oh my God, I can't believe I, I made it here. And he's obviously questioning it because he was such a bad person. He was right? just robbing yeah. a bank, right? Yeah, but he's like, okay, this is kind of cool. So the guy says, hey, listen, man. He goes, in this world, you get anything you want. Everything you want, you will get. Like, And he goes, what do you mean? He goes, well, whatever you want. And he goes, so what if I go gambling? He goes, every roll of the dice, you're going to get a seven. Anything you do is going to turn out awesome. And so this guy's just like, oh my God, this is the best thing ever. So he goes to the casino and every time he rolls a dice, he wins. And every time he tries something, it's it's a success. And then they fast forward in the episode where it's like three months later and he's sitting at the casino table and he's got these pretty girls next to him and he's got this scruffy looking beard and he's just he just looks miserable. And every time he throws a dice, he wins. And he's like, what's the point? Like, what's the use? If every time I roll the dice, I win. Everything I do, there's no chance. There's no potential to fail. Like, it's always going to work out. And he goes, this is, this is fucking miserable. This is horrible. So then he calls upon that, you know, angelic looking guy in the, in the white suit. And he shows up and he goes, this place sucks. He goes, there's no challenge. There's no risk. There's no excitement. He goes, every time I, I, I try to roll the dice, I get a seven. Every time I try and do anything, I succeed. He goes, I can't. This is Heaven is horrible. And then the guy in the white suit looks at him and says, who told you this was heaven? Ugh, so it's just like fucking huge. Like, Even hearing it a second time, it still gives me yeah. goosebumps, it's dude. A, I remember when such I walked, a, It's such a powerful, powerful story. It's it, funny because I visualize like Dan Bilzerian the whole time you're talking about yeah. that, like sitting there at the table dude, and everything. Dude, let me tell you something right now. Like if you look at, if you would, I don't know. I don't know if the statistic actually exists, but we know, uh, we know celebrities because that's why we, that's why their celebrities are famous, right? The drug abuse and suicide rate, or you know, dysfunction rate with celebrities is through the roof, through the roof. Their divorce rate is through the roof. Uh, what do they call it? The Twenty One Club with don't musicians. Don't you find it weird that we don't highlight that yeah. more? Don't you find that? I mean, if it was anything, any collection of people well, we that had this them. abnormal rate of suicide, drug abuse, celebrities. Addiction. Right, and but we don't talk a lot about that. No, we no. glorify them so yeah. much. Isn't no. that crazy? I think it's it's. Uh, I think if I think if more kids were educated on that, like you, I think yeah. you would you would be less likely to idolize some of these kids. You know, bro. The, the challenge is what make, gives you meaning. It's what gives life meaning. And when you're surrounded by all these people who say you're so awesome all the time and everything's so cool all the time, yeah. and you've got all this fame, that can be a personal hell. Right, you know what I'm saying? Especially when you've access to all these it's drugs. Like artificial all- at that point. It's you it, know, like people talking to you. It's it feels very phony. You know, like the way that you operate, it feels like it's it just if there's no challenge to it, the the, the purpose gets sort of you know lost. Now, of course, we're talking about the end, the, both ends of the spectrum right now. But yeah, there's a this lot is of very pe- much of an extreme. But there's a lot of people that fall in the middle of this, right? That's yeah. why I like the story so much because, uh, and I was just sharing this with someone the other day about how. You know, uh, you know, she's going through really rough times. She had somebody pass away that was really close to her. Who's this? Uh, my hairstylist. Oh, okay. And she, you could just tell she's been really down about it. And I just said, you know, you really have a lot of different ways to look at this. And I know you, you don't want to hear this right now because losing somebody close to you is like the, seems like the most awful thing in the world. But I think it's it's so much of our perspective and our outlook on that stuff that it really dictates how we feel. And if you really are feeling miserable 
you're almost allowing yourself to feel that way. You, if you can change, if you have the ability to change your perspective and your and your mind, mindset on that, you can alter the way you feel about it. Yeah. It stems from there first. Well, you could just change. And it sounds so easy just yeah, to say that. It, it does. It, you you know? can be, I mean, things can be very hard, of course, and very sad, but you can look at them as, oh my God, this is the worst thing ever. And, and uh, you know, I'm a victim of it. Or you can look at it as, okay, this is a terrible thing but there's growth on the other end of it. There's a, there's a, a quote that I put on my mm. Instagram today. So I'm reading a book by Carl Jung right now. He's a famous psychoanalyst. And is this, this quote that he said is just so incredible. It says, no tree, it is said, can grow to heaven unless its roots reach down to hell. And so like, what does that mean, right? Like, what does that mean that a tree can't reach heaven unless its roots reach down uh, to hell? And I th- what, what it means to me is in order to achieve the level of growth that brings you to the point where, you know, this is exemplified by heaven or that this growth where you, mm. you become the self-actualized individual or where you, where you experience this incredible personal growth where you change for the better. The impetus for that is trial by fire. It's always challenge. It's mm. always tremendous challenge. I don't think it's a coincidence that the most successful achievers in the world. And I mean, when I say success, it doesn't just mean money. I mean, true success, right? That those people typically had some of the hardest trials and tribulations because mm-hmm. that's the that's what gets you to change it it's not comfortable to shed your skin to become a new person nobody does that it, the only reason why you do that is because that is the, that's the only that's the other option that's the better option and and if something so painful as shedding your old skin or killing your old self becomes a better option it's because the challenge is so much worse or something that you're facing is so much worse so well, challenges you think are, of yeah you think of that too it being the rooted like you're rooted in those experiences right like the, that that uh the trials the tribulations the things that that you come across that you've overcome so you know how to navigate through that so say you know you keep keep growing in, at this exponential rate but now you know some crazy wind comes through you know some some new um you know objective comes and hits you and smacks you in the face and you're not like completely rooted for that, you're gonna you're gonna get chopped down. You ha- challenge is what gives life. Uh, it's what gives life meaning. We've all trained people. And for don't a long you time. don't you believe? I said this in the podcast just the other day. Don't you believe that the the greater the challenge, the the greater the reward. Of course, is? yeah. And the more the darker it is, the lighter it becomes. Like of it's, course, but it's the ability to get through that. And I think we have this where we want things so instantly. Like that's it's like I feel like oh dark times. Okay, I'm gonna have a positive attitude, so that's just gonna change things tomorrow. Like no, sometimes. Mm. It's going to take some work. Sometimes it's going to take months. Sometimes it might take you years. But the thing is, if you keep if you keep pushing in that direction, when you make it on the other side, it's that much. Well, you know what's weird is is our desire for innovation is always around making things more convenient. You know, and we're, we're eliminating a lot of challenge. Oh, absolutely. This is this is the this is why you have the the, the popularity of things like obstacle course racing, right? Yep. Because you you live in an air conditioned, you know, heated, climate controlled life where. I mean, let's face it, the average person in a developed Western society has far less uh, life-threatening challenges than, than their ancestors did, you know, 500 years ago, just far less. Like, life is, for all intents and purposes, easy compared to those, you know, 500 years ago. And that's the that's what makes it so hard. Five hundred years ago, if they could fast forward and come look at us in a gymnasium, bro, they would laugh at us. Like, why you guys, you, why, why you do listening? you have, why are you exercising? Yeah. There's yeah. plenty of work to do. Go outside. plow the fields, right, asshole. And, yeah. and that's why. And so the human humans, uh, we we have to have challenge. It's what gives us meaning. If we don't have challenge, that is uh, that's hell. Like if everything's given to you and everything comes easy, and it sounds like oh that would be so great. No, it's not. Like, think about it this way. Let's say you had all the money in the world, and people say, "Oh, if I if I had all the money in the world, I'd just go on a, 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 a you know a, a nice island and I'd have my drink and yeah. I'd sit on the beach all day." Like no, you wouldn't. Margaritas all you, day. You would. That would last about a month or maybe three months max, and then you'd fucking go crazy and you'd be depressed because you'd have no meaning. I'd you're be just, sunburned. Yeah, you're just sitting there with your drink and there's no purpose. We need purpose. And so we artificially create it now with things like obstacle course racing and challenges. Or or we can't figure out why we're depressed when, you know, we have food, we have shelter, we have a job, um, and yet I'm depressed and I'm anxious and what the hell is going on with me? It's because you don't feel like you have purpose. So mm-hmm. you have to have that challenge um, in order to find purpose for life. Otherwise, it's 
what is it nihilistic i'm, ex- I'm excited mm-hmm. for you, you do the t- it's this friday right no yeah. it's next friday oh it's next friday well i don't know when it's cool airs, to see how they receive yeah, yeah, no, that this yeah. will air bef- it'll be the friday it'll be the friday right after this yeah airs. they want me to talk on uh to do a uh, like a, a talk for the athletes or whatever so it's gonna Such be around me a great choice dude for that i can't believe you never even shared that on the podcast before what, that show yeah i have it three actually, stories it actually makes me want to go watch yeah. it because There's, i have three stories yeah. that i want to share that i think are going to uh, highlight um you know some of that what that meaning is about because you have all these athletes who are competing in obstacle course racing and it's like why why are they doing this and i know a lot of them find exhilaration from it it, but why and i think it goes down to it it gives us a sense of meaning because of the challenge and that's why we end up you know we end up doing it so no i 100 percent agree with that anyway man so shit i'm still sick this Mm. is the peak of my cold i think this morning so right now, how many days have you? Had, how many days bit. have you had it for right now? You know, this is like day two. Um, so I woke up this morning. I was supposed to lift weights with Jessica. So I get up, and you know, in the morning it's way worse. You know, we're all congested. Yeah. So I come downstairs. She has her coffee. I have a little caffeine. We're sitting there, and I'm like, God damn, I feel terrible. So she's like, Do you? You know, maybe we should just maybe you shouldn't work out, which is never what I want to do. So I'm like, No, 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 I'm gonna work out. So we sat there for a second. And then I just uh, had sex with her instead. So <laughs> we didn't we didn't work out, but we did work uh, it work it out. You worked in, you yeah. Worked, you worked so I had sex. on it. I had yeah, sex instead. Right. Six sex is great. Yeah, yeah I tried my hand at uh, mosh pitting. Uh, last oh, that's night, right, dude. Which, uh, yeah. How did was, that go? It was crazy. Wait a minute, you got in a mosh pit? Yes, bro. Yeah, You're I, fucking almost. 40. I'm an idiot. Like I was there with one of my friends and. You know, ahead of time, we're both like, "Yeah, we're not gonna, we're not gonna mosh pit. That's crazy. We're, you know, too old for this shit." And um, I just music. I, you felt I the music. Help you it. You felt the music. It dude. was like one of my favorite just, bands of all time. And so, <laughs> like, I mean, a couple of the the opening bands were really good too. But um, you know, so I was like kind of containing myself. And the crowd, there was just like it wasn't a big crowd, so it was like I got immediate access to get like to the stage, and so I was like kind of working my way to the stage, and then somebody kind of shoved into me, and then it like triggered a response. I was like, "What?" <laughs> Bow, and I just started like getting all into it and uh, bashing into everybody and stuff. And did and, you hurt anybody? Oh my god, I got so tired. <laughs> <laughs> I was huffing and puffing so hard, dude. I was like, this is embarrassing. Old man mosh pit. Yeah, I was total old man mosh pit. I was just trying to hold my ground. There, so I was like tightening my core real tight. Are you know, there like, any you can't push me over? Are there any girls in a mosh pit ever? Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. You gotta be real like sensitive. Like I always I mean, that's who you. I'm always looking out for that. Yeah, you know? most guys are pretty. It's like a uh, courtesy. Yeah. Curtis, you don't throw. You don't throw a hard shoulder no. to some girl that weighs half your. No, I she's kind of. You, know. you outweigh her by a hundred pounds. Oh my god! I didn't know girls would even yeah, do that. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And every now and then there'll be some asshole that like knocks him over or something. And then then he's a target. You know what I mean? I, I go after that. Hey, guy. so I, I feel like you've been you've been kicking up your music listening uh, lately. I have. I've been really on this um, this quest to to find new music and to get inspired and. Um, going to a concert, man, I was so inspired. Like I've never heard the, the opening bands specifically. I hadn't heard of them. And so it was all just like brand new sounds. And, um, yeah, I was talking to my friend about that. I was like, wow, man, it's just like the wheels are turning in my head and I'm starting to get that, um, that kind of inspiration to come back. And it's uh, at home, I'll go home and then kind of escape to my office and just start jamming on some like new tunes that are kind of coming in my head. I haven't had like new songs that have popped into my head for like years it's it's kind of a weird thing you have to be it has to be like a constant practice yes, bro so it's i i latched on to this again just uh so i was sharing earlier about like this you know going through this time right now has been for sure probably one of the most uh challenging for me as far as like battling depression and stuff and the whole basketball and snowboarding thing was going to be my outlet and then to tear my achilles it's like Fuck! Like yeah, so you, you took got all punch you, you, in the nuts as yeah, well. Yeah, it was like, uh, what the fuck am I supposed to do now? Like that was the whole plan. Was don't worry, I got this. I'll ride this fucking wave. I get no problem. I'm gonna go do these things, and that hit me, and it was like shit. Music it was a very, very big part of my my youth, and I've lost touch of that. And that's why I always defend it when we get in these when Sal and I get in these arguments about shitty music today. And I'm like, nah, dude, I'm, we're just disconnected, brother. We're not listening because there's fucking great yeah. artists out there that are putting out unbelievable stuff. That's we're just not connected like we used to be connected as kids. Mm-hmm. And I know what it's like to be that way. So when this all started happening, I started really kind of 
diving back into listening to music. And it's pretty neat. It's pretty neat to be uh, somebody who was so connected to that growing up and then to take like a hiatus and then to return and then to notice these these emotions and feelings and my and the way I right. and did you are you connecting to that right now? Oh yeah, totally. Like you you start to understand what what you know, how it makes you emote. Like I I uh, just just being in the presence of like all this like loud music and everybody's energy and stuff really affected me and it I swear I shit you not like it totally like raised my testosterone like through the roof like I was like whoa where is this old friend you know like it was like <laughs> that high school testosterone feeling you know it was like being at that that concert it was it was really tripping me out I yeah. was like, wow, is there, I used is, to get really inspired by are this there, stuff. Is it a bunch of, are they all younger than you or is a lot of people your age in that? No, there was actually a lot of older people there. I mean, there was a few younger, I mean, it was like a 16 and older kind of a, um, a venue, but um, yeah, there was there was quite a few old old geezers there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did you swing in the walker? Yeah. <laughs> did you notice <laughs> it, Did you notice those emotions uh, starting to pop for you before the mosh pit and when you were actually starting? Because you, you've also kicked up your listening to music, not just going to concerts, but listening in your car more and shit like that too haven't you yeah yeah totally i've been yeah i've i i've just been looking for unique sounds and and things to get inspired by and um yeah i've been listening to like i found a couple bands that like remind me of uh bands i grew up <laughs> listening to and, and then it, it it totally um it triggers that um it just stimulates me and and I noticed that, and so I was like, wow, like, because I remember going on these long trips, even like when when you had to like take these car rides with your family, mm -hmm. and uh, nobody would have like good conversation, you know. So I was always just like, fuck this, I'm putting my headphones on, and I would listen to entire albums like over and over and over again, and they would affect me the whole time, and I would just, it was it was totally an emotional connection. And oh so, yeah, yeah, it was. It's like. It's recreating that. I'm getting that to to kind of come back. Whereas uh, before, I think I was I was getting kind of numb to music. Music was just there for a while, and now it's like I'm I'm reconnecting 100%. to it. Hundred percent. I wonder yeah. if hundred percent. I wonder if that kind of music is going to make a, a huge. Is it starting to make a resurgence? I don't know, dude. It was a very like I said, it was a very small crowd, which kind of depressed me on some level because. The musicianship was fucking awesome. Mm. Like people were doing things that like. And this is what what kind of metal is this? It, you know, it was different genres. There's like subsects of the genres like all over the place. But there was like um, like hardcore. There was like a melodic kind of metal. There was like a thrash kind of a metal. Because I feel like it's it's about time first off for metal to make a little bit of a resurgence mm -hmm. or rock in that you know in that kind of style. Um, and also, if you look it, at like. You know, guys are trying to grow beards, and all mm -hmm, of a sudden, like mm -hmm. guys are trying to be more mm -hmm. masculine. Maybe because we we're, we're trying to find our masculinity. I would see how that could play a factor in it mm. becoming popular again, for sure. Because it's it's the right climate, you know, like even politically and everything. It's like, you know, when Rage Against Machine came out, or like punk rock really had a big impact on you know culture. It's because it was against right. something, and like everybody's pissed off right now. They need an outlet. Right. So it's a great outlet for that because everybody was cool. Like we were bumping into each other. Nobody's out there trying to hurt anybody, you know? And it's just like that was always like a code that, that you just shared, like being a part of that. So it's fascinating. Like it's, just, it's just, it's like organized chaos. You know, everybody's like contributing, but like nobody's intentionally like being violent. You know? That's that's so fascinating. Yeah. I find, What I find fascinating is how we allow it, how think we've allowed things like that to kind of, we move on from in our lives. Mm -hmm. That something, and, and what made me think about this was like, dude, <clears throat> this is something that like fed my soul for, you know, 20 plus years of my life, probably at least 20, like really for sure the first 15 a lot. And then probably to 20, pretty still consistent. You know, it wasn't until yeah. my mid twenties that I really start to you know, and what it was was other things, and we talked about this started to take up my time. You know, I was now I'm reading instead of listening as much. And I noticed that when I when also my music consumption goes up, my my reading goes down. Right? right, so it's like it was kind of a give and take. It's like okay, these things are I, I'm I'm growth driven right now. I I want to excel in life. These things are more important. Music isn't necessarily doing that, but now going back and revisiting it, I I learned something very important, at least to me, that it fed a different part of me. You know, it's not always about the, the success side, the business, the growing, the learning uh, that way. And maybe like increasing my intelligence. There's also a part that's important. Oh, but me. it does though. It does. Yeah. It, it does, directly. It do, Well, I mean, even directly. I mean, there, there's some pretty 
cool studies. I'm show comparing that. though. I'm comparing reading books to uh, to listening to music. You I could th- argue that the books. Would I be- think what music does is it. Um, I mean, this is based on some of the science that you see. It's not necessarily giving you information like you're reading a book and you're getting information, but it's setting the stage for you to improve your creative ability and receive information and re- and store it better. Yeah, but my point is I don't think I think if you chose to read books on business your entire life or listen to music your entire life, the person who was probably reading books has a better chance. Look at the information there. That's my point. <clears throat> yeah. So that's my point is that I think I, I'm not taking away <laughs> from how important that is, but it, there's also a reminder there or a lesson there of there there this is an important piece of my life too to, that that Fed, that has that has fed me, and right away, as soon as I started to immerse myself into what's going on right now in the music world and listening, I dude, I've driven by my house like fucking yeah. like three different times where I'm just I'm listening to an album and I'm into the albums. I'm so into a flow state mm-hmm. that I I feel I can hear everything in slow motion, and I'm like visualizing like what he's talking about or what she's talking about. And I'm like, oh man, I forgot I like. What's this. interesting is mm-hmm. like my consumption of like audiobooks and music have both taken off right now so the you know in, in terms of like you know what i'm interested in in, mm. in learning the learning process so it's it's almost sparked even more like oh, quest good. for yeah for see i was already going pretty hard on that so that's yeah it's taken away from me a little bit just a little bit you know what i'm saying i'm finding a nice balance of what things i'm enjoying putting my headphones on and just listening to music and then what times i'm like audiobooks or reading you know so i'm trying to have a nice well since doing mind pump this is the f- first time in my career where i've not had music on constantly yeah because either I, when i ran gyms obviously music's always on but then when i had my own facility which i had for 12 or 13 years i got to choose the music so i would get into new music just because you get sick of listening to the same shit remember when you would work in the gym and you'd hear the same oh my you know God. 15 songs all day long so i got to choose my own music so i started i really got into music that was the only time in my life when i really got into music but it was always on in the background and this is the first time in my career where I don't have music on constantly. Because when you're in a gym, that's all you have in the background. Every conversation, you, everything, everything you do, there's music playing. And now I'm in a quiet environment. It was interesting. It, it was different for me at first. I had to get used to it for the first like you know few months we did this. Yeah, I, I, what it makes me wonder also is how many other things are you know being guys that are almost in their 40s. Like, what are other things in your life that probably served you for 10, 15 years? And, and and brought a ton of joy in your life that you've neglected because you now are focusing on other things that are more important. I'm a parent now, so that's right. more important. I'm a I'm a father now. Or, I'm a husband now. You used this, to do all the time, right? Yeah. Right. What are certain things? That, and so it's really sent me on this path of uh, almost getting reconnected with myself and, and trying to figure. And you know, it's some things that I might try and realize, like, oh, it's not as cool as I thought it was. Like, yeah. you know, like I'll, I'll pick. I picked a video game up not that long ago. I did video games my whole life, right? And it was like, oh, it's fun, but not that fun for me. Like yeah. that, that was that 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 was less for me. But there's other things that I have felt that I've I've revisited that I used to do a lot, and I'm like, whoa, that's really. I think that's about now. Yeah, there's one of them I've noticed that I'm trying to I'm trying to pursue uh-huh. uh, in a different light because. Um, like working on your house is like that. That's become like such a chore for me. I hate it. You know, like I would so much rather just uh, hire it out and mm. get somebody because I'm, you know, I'm overwhelmed with with what's going on with just balancing day to day activities in life in general. But um, my I have this goal because I mean my kids and I have um, sort of I mean, we've had this idea of like having a a tree house and uh, we. I spent time with both both my boys to kind of draw parts of it with them and just get their ideas of like so rad. you know what what they would like specifically and uh, so both of them have different ideas and so I'm I'm now in a position where I'm like I'm drawing up my own draft like like trying to incorporate like both of their ideas into it and then just seeing if like that's something that I can enjoy again you know like building something that like you know I, I will see immediately impact you know my kids like that so i do have plans to do that i don't know when the hell i'm gonna do it but uh you know if i could just if i could just like plan it out ahead of time and then do do things at a, at a gradual pace where i'm i'm more enjoying it and not feeling like it's a chore and it's work yeah, you know? yeah. that's yeah. super awesome adam i was gonna ask you because uh, you're into the cryptocurrencies Mm-hmm. How is the price of them right now? Is there any changes? I actually, did you hear the news? Uh, I know we. I overall, mm-hmm. I know we're down. I actually don't even watch mine anymore. So okay. I, I invested in a certain amount. I told myself that once I hit that amount, that you know this is 
I don't even pay attention. Just like I don't pay attention to my stocks. Like money that I, I know what's going <laughs> on and how what all the scare right now, but it don't scare me. Well, I'm, so, I'm in for the long haul. Well, so because Facebook banned uh, ads for cryptocurrency, and now Google just banned cryptocurrency ads. I feel like the assault on cryptocurrencies yeah. has begun. But you know what that does? That's a good thing. You know bro. what that does? That that makes more interest in it. Well, Absolutely. That's what bro. I was going to say because you know, I feel like, like it's, it'll drive it down initially and like, then it'll, ooh, turn, it'll yeah. Don't worry, bro. It's, I, uh, cuz what I think it's going to do is it's going to the whole reason why people go into cri- cryptocurrencies, oh, a lot of people is that whole you know, conspiracy theory thing. That's only feeding into it. Like the more they try to stop it. Yeah. You know, the more it's going to... Doug, when's Google, this, when's this Google episode go up? choose to do that, you know? like it, So, you guys know that Monday is Jerry Robinson. <coughs> okay, we should ask M- him about this. Fucking A, we're going to talk to him about that. I can't yeah. wait to get him on the podcast, yeah. dude. So, that's that's going to be... We're going to talk all about this shit, dude. We're yeah. going to dive all into it. But, I, you know, I, what I tell everybody is this, at least what from everything that I've read, and I've been following it quite a bit. I've listened to a lot of podcasts on it, read a lot of articles on it, and I... I tell people, listen, if you've got, if you have uh, money that you can invest, whatever that amount is, take 5% of that and mm-hmm. invest it in some of the best, uh, wh- who you think has the best blockchain, right? Wh- whatever cryptos. And there's lots of good information out there to f- see what some of the leaders are, read up, read up on them. Now, the thing to be be careful and what, be aware of, and I can't wait to talk to Jerry Robinson about this, is uh, there's tons of charlatans that are, that are <coughs> yep. it's not hard to put up a website, yep. have come up with a concept, an idea, and front it like it's a big deal, and make it sound like it's amazing, and you're talking to all these people, but... The, at the end of the day, like regulation come in and fuck everybody. So this is I, a good time to buy because I'm looking it up right now, and the the price is definitely plummeted because of this. And a blog post from somebody who's the head of the International Monetary Fund urged regulators around the world to crack down on cryptocurrencies' potential to be a major new vehicle for money laundering and the financial and the financing of terrorism. Let of me, course, let, oh, they got throw course. terrorism. Yeah, in they're the gonna mix, they're right? gonna attach yeah. it to shit like that because. <laughs> and let me tell you what 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 will make That's it. I'll tell you this. And this is why this is why I I double down on this whole thing because even if it doesn't, and even if regulation goes in. Okay, being somebody who was, you're gonna get, how are you going to control it? Exactly. I, so what, wh- who it'll serve? And I, I was a part of this industry. So when I was a part of cannabis, it was I was in there during the gray area. It still is kind of gray. It was really gray when I was in there. And I tell you what, if this technology was around, hundred percent, we would have been. You, it, it would make total sense for us to use this and feel safe about because one of the mo- the best ways that that's how they bust everybody is the money yeah it's not the drugs <laughs> they, it's not that's yeah. how they get that's you. how they got al capone they get everybody that with the money everybody yeah. You, yeah. you don't get them on the ever the drugs get consumed well that's the you thing know what I'm there's no evidence there the money is where they get everybody and so i don't give a fuck if this doesn't get into the banking system i don't give a fuck if it doesn't get into there's enough markets there's enough there. market there's enough people that love drugs and and that would want to know where the best sources are which will be on the web that will be oh, they already exist right now so if you can we can find places where you get the purest of whatever it is that you want and if that's untraceable i don't give i don't give a fuck what anybody yep. says a good portion of america will 100 percent be using that technology because i don't care who you are what what your poison is if you knew that you could get the purest the safest and safety meaning that not it being tracked back you by you buying x amount of coins and then oh it's game over dude well you know the irony is too that the the cryptocurrency has actually resulted in uh, less um, overdose uh, deaths from drugs because the quality has improved because what's yeah. happened now... It's like a rating system. Well, see, the black market for drugs is... Th- and this is the thing, like drug regulation, as strictly as, we, as we've regulated them, it's a, it's a case of the, the medicine being worse than the, than the disease where the black market for drugs not only created this... Uh, or, or at least the regulation of drugs has created this black market for drugs where they're regulated by guns, they're regulated by violence... Um, it's also uh, caused uh, more overdoses because you, there, it was hard for you to, to, to get consistent with your with your drugs. So if you buy your heroin from this guy over here and you know you take so much, but then you buy it from this guy and he makes it twice as strong, boom, now you die. Or they from, mix it with yeah, potentially dangerous other chemicals. <laughs> or that, that yeah. right, or that. Um, so there's, there's, there's you know, all that. So the black market for drugs is just terrible. Yeah. But what cryptocurrencies have done inadvertently is they've allowed people to trade or to buy drugs in these markets and rate the drug dealers and the drugs that they get. Right. And you can actually <laughs> buy, did you know you can buy drug testing kits now online? 
Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, you could buy these kits. You, 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 they've been around for a while now, where you could buy these kits where, let's say you buy a drug like which ecstasy is how, or Which whatever. is how these guys are rating it, because I've seen ratings. On yeah, you test that, it yourself. They'll, they'll say the purity. They'll say, this is 99 point yep. whatever percent of this. It's this, that. It was clean. Wow. People will report back to that about drug dealers. And these drug dealers care about their reputation online because that's how they make all their money. That's right. I've seen this shit firsthand, that's bro. It's right. crazy. That's right. And, and if, you think, if you think if you think if you think blockchain's going away, it's fucking brilliant. You it's can't, the future. You can't take it away. Yeah, yeah. I'm tell I tell everybody I know if you don't got a little bit on something like oh, technology man. is decentralizing everything and it's out it's going to outcompete all regula- all regulations, all centralized regulations. Mm-hmm. All the only regulations that will exist <clears throat> or at least what technology is going to ha- cause happen is the only regulations that's going to exist are market regulations where the consumers regulate the producers and you get that kind of feedback. There are going to be no more central regulations because they're going to be obsolete to the point where, I mean, look at- You don't need all the middlemen. Uh, look, here's, here's one. Sometimes I'll argue regulations to people and they'll say things like, well, don't we need an FDA? And I'll be like, well, once the technology exists to where I can scan whatever I'm eating and it'll tell me what's in it, which by the way, the technology- is almost there. It why exists am I gonna, already. The technology exists. Yeah. It's just not available to the public yet. Yeah. Why am I going to want the FDA? Why the FDA fucks up a lot of the times when this device is 100 percent accurate 100 percent of the time, where I can scan right. this apple and you are your own. FDA. I know what the pesticides are. I know what herbicides are on there. I know if there's wax on the apple. I know the vitamin and mineral content. I know the the, the macronutrient breakdown. That technology exists and it will be available relatively soon. Why would we be paying for some centralized regulatory agency when that's so much so much better? So it's decentralizing anything, everything. So uh, on that note, in uh, at South by Southwest, a company. Let me look at the, see if I can find the name of this company. Icon, Icon, just unveiled unveiled a three like D. I know a three yeah. D printed house. Oh, I saw that. <laughs> Six, so it's a six hundred fifty square foot house uh-huh. that costs. Ten grand to build. Oh, what? Ten, ten grand. grand. You know, this is what it's ten scared. Grand. Hey, it scares That's me right crazy. now because we're house shopping. This is part of what scares me. I'm like kind of freaking out. I'm telling Katrina, like, yeah. we're buying in an area that's not cheap to live over here and to invest that much into a home when these homes can be built for like it's gonna fuck the housing market well, up. Well, are you are you looking at property potentially? Then? Well, look well, at land. That's yeah, what that's I mean. Look at land. Because then you thought. can print your own fucking house on there. Dude. Yeah. Land will always be worth something. Right, no, no, right, right. of course. <clears throat> yeah, right. And but yeah, but so so with this thing here, check this out, right? So it's ten thousand dollars to build, three D printed. How long do you think it takes to build this house? Damn, I don't know. Probably like a day because it's yep, twelve to twenty four hours. Twelve to twenty four hours. I was totally just uh-huh. joking. Wow. So oh. the, so the plan is for Icon to build a community of 100 homes in El Salvador next year using, it's called the Vulcan printer. Dude, I would love to Dude, see Dude, it's this. happening. Dude, <laughs> to I'm, build a neighborhood uh, in like a week, in like two days or some shit. It would remember be- when you, you go on that like Mexico, like I'm going to, I'm going to go on this like mission trip to help, you mm-hmm. know, and like you build some shitty shack, you know, and you feel really good about it. This will build like, you know, 20,000 of them. In the time that you you built one, bro, the future is here, dude. It's, it's so I, so. What I think is going to happen in the future is you're you're going to because think about it this way: patents will be become obsolete uh, because three D printers will be able to print everything. You'll have decentralizing of everything. I think the future you're going to have less. Do of you think patents? Super, will, do you think patents will be obsolete, or couldn't you, wouldn't you patent a blueprint though? So I could and then share it for free. I mean, people will be able to share mm. it for free. I don't know. I think you could still. I think you could still find a way to kind of police that, dude. I, I don't. You think they will? Let's be honest. Well, uh, they're gonna try. They'll try. Uh, they'll but, try. But good luck. Yeah. Uh, they can't even, bro. They can't even figure out how to stop. You know, theft of music and movies. Well, There's how like how much money goes into that. How does that? everybody get paid? You know, it's like it's all Patreon based. You know, like if <clears> it'll, with that model, it'll be it'll be like musicians will make more, their money from doing concerts and yeah. people from their presence and their you know their own original ideas at that moment. But patents will be, bro. They're gonna be fucking off. Obs- Check this out. You know what else is gonna be obsolete in the future? Passwords. You know, when you have a quantum when when quantum computing becomes a yeah. reality. It'll be able to figure out any password within because you know at the quantum level you could basically already, we're do, already transitioning that way. That's why I'm trying Apple, to do that with you. That's why Apple. Yeah, that's why Apple. Yeah. I mean, I fucking love it, dude. It's great. It's I, so badass. Do that to open your bank account and all. Yes, so much, so much easier. Oh, it's so much easier. And yeah. I'm the worst with passwords. Yeah. What are you gonna do when CGI is gonna be able to copy that? Oh, dude. 
I'm going to go to cryptocurrency. <laughs> so I watched right. a video. Abandon I, all. Yeah. I watched a video Dollar the other bills. day of this, uh, this video that was made. And uh, it was a celebrity. I forgot who it was. And it looked so real. And they're like, no, it was an actor with CGI over their face. It looked like. It looked like another celebrity. Yeah. And I'm like, holy shit. They can already do that. Wow. Bro, what if somebody wants to, what if they want to frame you? You know didn't, what I mean? What didn't, if, like, they, didn't, they show, didn't they show some video with, I don't I don't know if it was Barack Obama or, you know, Trump, but like they showed. They made him say something, yeah, but he didn't? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They just literally just CGI'd him saying something that he didn't even say. And it was so fucking, like, it looked so real. You know what freaks me out about that is, you know, let's say there's, like, a major, like, an organization like the CIA and they want to fuck with you. They exactly. could totally make a video and be like, no, Adam's the one that committed that murder. Watch, there's a video right there. And exactly. And like, you know, guilty. Yeah. Right. But it's fucking So video CGI. evidence has to be, like, completely, I mean, that that has to be. It's like, going to be weird, man. You know, I don't know. I, like, I, like the new DNA, you know, how, like, I mean, they, they totally, like, had to, like, reinvent the way that they... Uh, looked into all that kind of stuff once that came out. It's going to be really weird, dude. <laughs> it is going to be weird. Yeah. I, d- I don't know. I don't know what yeah. to... Th- Sometimes it scares me. And I, but then I'm like, it am I being weird. an old man? It already is weird. It's like, <clears throat> all this stuff is happening, you know? It's crazy. Yeah. We'll what, see what, what do you think? You think food's going to change big time for us? Do you think how we consume food, the way we look at food? Do you think... Do you think totally. Uh, I think, think that's going to radically <clears throat> change? Or you? I feel like it We haven't to. figured out... It, we haven't... We Processed don't know enough food. about it yet. Yeah. We don't know enough about food yet to... To be able well, to, you know, the utopian view of it, right, is to, to keep going in the direction where we have these buildings, but simultaneously, like all the food is growing within the building, you know, so you, it's almost like you have your uh, your greenhouse, but it's like like interwoven into the building. Like, I think we're going to see stuff like that. I think uh, I think people will start to become farmers. I think it's going to be yeah. we're going to be so worried about what everybody else is putting in the foods and shit like that that you're like, fuck this. Let's. Let's take our garage that we no longer it's need. So much more empowering. We don't, that have way. Car, we don't need yeah. cars, and we're going to convert it into like a. We get our own energy source from the sun. You know, like let's like get off the. Grid. Or will it be like kind of how I thought earlier when I said that they're going to divide us in half? Where you're going to have the people that accept this new, you know, almost AI world plugged in all the time, never really in reality. Genetically engineered. Yeah, like totally. In, Everybody's yeah. like 6'5 and super good looking and right. fit. And then you've got the the people that refuse that, but they're all like, you know, bad teeth and ugly. And, <laughs> and not really good genetics, you know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> that'll be, that'll be, you'll be able to point them out like, oh, yeah. you're, oh you're from that side. I can tell. Right, uh, right, right. Yeah. Watch, hey. watch all the perfect, you know, people will be like, oh yeah, he's so rugged and, and ugly if I count. Right. You know, like it becomes this weird, like fascination. It's like taboo, a fetish. Yeah, yeah. It's like a fetish to like. Yeah. Are you a natural? Bang one of the. Yeah. Are you a natural yeah, human? The, the yeah. gangle tooth. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 speaking of, <laughs> what you call them, the gangle tooth? Yeah, the gangle tooth. Speaking of food and all natural, Justin, have you had a chance to try the Green Chef yet? I haven't yet. I've been waiting. Mine's the carnivore one that's supposed to arrive uh, that they they provide. Oh, so they I have got, a carnivore. They have a carnivore chef? based yes. green chef. Yeah, bro. They say they. This so, is why they're so smart. I, know. I don't know why other other you know food companies aren't doing they're this. They're jumping on yeah the trend. So brilliant. This is I I called this shit when it, back when I first started competing and I saw the wave of all this like all these delivery oh. service meals were just exploding all over the place. And all of them was all all the cheap food. You know what I'm saying? None of it was organic. Everyone's putting it in the plastic containers. I'm like, when when is someone going to deliver something good? I saw Blue Apron come up, and then then when, when Blue Apron has good food, but they don't have like you can't yeah. pick paleo Blue, Blue or Apron's keto too or fancy. Yeah. Well, Green Chef, oh before. Green Chef lets you pick from those categories, which I love, and yeah. the food quality is just freaking. Oh no, it's oh, I can't bomb. wait to try yeah. it. So you did, tried it, right? So I, I did. You it. made it with yeah, your girlfriend, right? Oh, it's so fun too. By the way, like yeah. cooking with your girl is guaranteed sex. Can Jeez. I just say that right now? <laughs> yeah. Guaranteed sex. <laughs> didn't we the, the, pretty much anything when we first microphone. brought up Green Chef the first the first commercial that, that we did for them, didn't we fuck up on something with the the website with them and people had a hell of a hard time? Was it Green Chef that we fucked it up on that? It was the show then? notes. It was the wrong link, I believe. Oh, what? yeah, it's greenchef.us forward slash mind pump not greenchef.com. So greenchef.us yeah. right forward slash mind pump. Oh, uh, uh, in the show notes it's correct now though, right? Yeah. I, yeah, it's been correct. 
Okay, so it'll be it'll be right for people right well, now. Dot US. Because we I had, a, on. I had a ton <laughs> yeah. of DMs from people that uh, were like, I tried to do the Green Chef thing. It's da, not, da, da. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not a very, sorry. Very yeah. used. Try our, again. Our, our bad. Try it again. Yeah. Hey, did you guys? So you know this this whole like we've been having this conversation about religion. You guys are calling you know Team Fireproof. Did you guys see? <laughs> Do you guys see the conversation? You see how annoyed he is with it now. I don't. No, I don't no. get annoyed. I like We're getting it. all these DM, DMs love, yeah, and everything. I know. Yeah. Did you guys see the conversation on our forum about all this stuff? No, no, I, I didn't read that. that so we got in this. Buried. We got in this conversation because I don't know who. I think it was Mark uh, Farrell, right? Isn't that his name? He's on our forum. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. He said something about how I talked about how prayer exists in uh, in, in religion, probably because. Uh, it helped bring down the CNS, you know, or to more parasympathetic state, better for digestion. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and religion oftentimes will do that. It'll take something that we do that's good and they'll, and they'll put it in dogma it. and they'll ritualize it. Yeah. But it started this big old debate about whether or not humans have this innate morality or if we need a belief system to create that morality. And so we were arguing back and forth. And I used to argue the same way that he did and, and some other people on the forum and that. You know, humans are just, we're just naturally good. And I used mm. to think that, like, no, you don't have to have a belief system. But, you know, uh, when you start to look at history and you start to realize that. No, there's a lot of lemmings out there. No, you, uh, we're a blank slate. Humans are a blank sl- We just had uh, yeah, Max right. uh, uh, Lugavere on the show, right? And he talks about how, you know, basically when an infant is born, we are in, we're still in utero, or not in utero. They call but it a like, fourth trimester because be, you're still developing the brain. And and we, and you need to, you need to create these. We don't have these innate instincts like other animals do in the sense that we have some, but it's not the same. Mm. In which you need a, a belief system, and when you follow that belief system, it dictates how you behave. Right. Which is why humans are capable of some horrible shit, right? Like, if you look at communism and Nazism and some of the things that, or, or some of these societies, some, some of these hunter gatherer societies that are cannibal, you think how could they possibly do this? Well, that their, their their foundational belief system is what propels them to do this. It's a normality. So we had this. They, dis- yeah. we, we were having this debate and discussion, and then I brought up the concept of uh, freedom, the concept of liberty, and I was making the argument that if it wasn't for, and I'm not a religious person. This it's important to note. Like I'm not saying this because I'm defending my religion. I'm not a religious individual. I'm agnostic at best. I used to be an atheist. And uh, if you if you examine the ideas of liberty and freedoms from the for the individual, where an individual has rights that should be not infringed upon, that is directly from the Judeo Christian religion, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. where you had like the foundation of of America, where. I mean, when we won the Revolutionary War, George Washington was offered the, the the kingship, and he turned it down. And it's because he believed in a God that created man in His image and gave him inalienable rights. All men inalienable rights. It wasn't expressed perfectly. Of course, we had slaves, and women couldn't vote, and all that stuff. But those rights and that belief, which was derived from religion, it was not. It wasn't some just some person who's like, "Hey guys, I don't want to be king. I don't think we should rule over all these people. Everybody right. has, you know, I think everybody should have equal rights in terms of liberties." Nobody fucking said that. Mm-hmm. That came from a belief uh, that came from Judeo-Christian roots. And if we didn't have that belief system, we would not have, you know, the the, the modern concept of freedom and liberty. So although now we take it for granted, where if you don't, if, you know, you could say to yourself like. And you take it for granted because you live in this country and or you live in a free society with where men and women have you know equal opportunities where we don't have you know there isn't slavery which by the way was practiced on every freaking continent in the world for for since the beginning of you know mankind or whatever yeah. none of that happens in some of these modern societies now and we take it for granted and we think no 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 humans naturally we're naturally you know good people and naturally we want to do no we don't the natural state of man is poverty is grinding poverty is terrible conditions and we treat each other like shit unless we have this belief system that is you know that we believe that we need to treat each other a certain way and the that was derived from this belief in god so we had this huge conversation on the forum about it and it's crazy that i'm arguing that side because i'm i'm not the religious person but I'm also trying to be objective. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking yeah. at things from well, an objective point of view. it's better. Yeah, it's better that you're coming in with that perspective, you know, instead of somebody that's like super religious and has like, a, you know, sort of a bias uh, in that direction. It's, it's great to like have an objective kind of view is like, well, you know, everybody can, uh, you know, benefit from, um, you know, like, like understanding morality and understanding how to treat people. And it's like, yeah, it does need to be taught. 
uh, you know, like people do need to know, like, you know, what, what that fabric looks like. You have to have that operating system. And it, it came from the, these roots where they believed, and this is, you know, again, part of the Judeo-Christian religion where, you know, people are created with inalienable rights and people don't realize just how revolutionary and insane that idea was when it was first proposed and when it was first put in a government where we have a bill of rights, which people don't realize this. They think that we're a pure democracy. We're not. We're a, we're, we, we ha- we're a democracy in terms of how we elect our officials, but we're actually a constitutional republic, which means that there are certain inalienable rights granted or bestowed upon us by our creator. This is in the fucking constitution that shall not be infringed upon, meaning there is no majority of vote that can infringe upon these and it's written in our in our government. So that means that you know if if, the, if there's a million people in this country and 999 you know 1999 people vote to steal your shit, they can't because you have these rights that are that everybody has that God gave you. And so, you know, I was trying to make that I was trying to explain to them like, look, this is this is a very important part of human history. It is part we can't separate religion from human evolution. And when people talk about eradicating religion, you have to be very careful because what may replace it may be far fucking worse mm-hmm. than what we what we originally had. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, it's kind of crazy. Stuff. I, I love hearing you talk about. It. I got to promise our our podcast listeners that I won't let this turn into a religious uh, podcast because we all know how Sal oh, can yeah. get when he goes down the rabbit hole, and pretty soon here he's going to find Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. And, and let me tell you, dude, no, Justin, not. you know what is, where we're going to go? We're not going to jump the shark, as yeah, you call yeah, it. Yeah, uh, don't worry. Yeah. The harder, yeah. the harder the you push me. I'm not even pushing, dude. Uh, no, he brought it up. Yeah, yeah. We're talking yeah. about it. No, no, no. no. It's, all, it's all objective thought. This is, anthropologists have talked about this and, you know, biologists. and. You know, I, I and think so one of the things that uh, where you and I connected on a whole new level, which I, we've all, I've always felt very connected to you, uh, both you guys, uh, when you first shared... Jordan Peterson with me uh, that when we when we started listening to that and reading that I thought this this guy pr- presents this better than I could have ever explained myself and this is how I feel like it, for the most part there's some things that I actually disagree a little bit with but for the most part I mean it, it's so spot on and I know that it it resonated heavily it with just you. I I'm very much into uh, into human psychology governments economy you know economics all that stuff and it reminds me of when, like many times, the U.S. has actually stepped in to a dictatorship or a tyrannical regime, and we will get rid of their government and we'll create a vacuum. And every single time, what replaces that is way fucking worse. I, I actually yeah. want you every to, time this yeah. topic right here. I actually want oh, you to man. get into with Jerry Robinson because he's got some. He he'll he's he drops hell of knowledge on that mm-hmm. on just that topic alone. So getting in the yeah. economics and how that played a role in religion. Well, and that's my point. Like if you abolish this belief system, and all of a sudden you're like, no, it's bad because there are elements that uh, and, and people have definitely used yeah, and perverted. What do we latch on to now. Well, what replaces it many times if not all the time is worse and especially when you have something that's got a history of evolution and there are certain things that have worked well, yeah, for a long there's time opportunists who are wolves that are going to come in and 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 become tyrannical well what i'm afraid of is what will replace something like that is this new ageism or the scientism which the worship of science is very scary because science does not have ethics science is by nature is not, doesn't have ethics it's 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 valueless it's supposed to be it's supposed to be with no value because that's why that's what makes science so powerful is that there is no belief system it's just either this is what works and yeah. this is what you know here's the result this is what we found uh, so, this is what we did so find. if you don't have if you if you start to worship science you are going to go down a fucking evil path where you know, if you don't have any ethics behind it, what governs what we do? Right. And we're already seeing that. Look, right, like thinning the herd. That's just evolution. Bro, this, the Soviet Union tried to combine, uh, let's say, Ebola with smallpox. They tried to do that. Why? Because they wanted to, they wanted something as deadly as Ebola to be as fucking contagious as smallpox. They actually went in and did Damn. that. And, this, and that's because there's no ethics there. There is no like, should we do this? It's like, no. You know, or science. Let's just go for it because we need it or whatever. Right. So science, we need it. <laughs> science is a very what for 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 war. Oh yeah, God. you know, yeah. for I mean, science is a very powerful tool. But if there's no ethics around it, you know, to help govern it, science could take us some dark, dark paths. So we got to be. Well, careful. you're seeing that with like cloning, dude. All that stuff that's the thing. It's going crazy. That's right the now. thing. Yeah, so again, scary. I'm not, you know, I'm not promoting a religion or anything like that. I'm just saying, be careful what you wish for when you start to talk mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Well said, friend. Oh,
being brought to you by Chimera Coffee. It's the only coffee that is infused with all natural nootropics for a cleaner, calmer, and more focused buzz without the crash. Click the Chimera link at mindpumpmedia.com and input the discount code MINDPUMP at checkout for 10% off. It's the motherfucking qua. The eagle has landed. Quee qua. First question is from Phoebes Cray K. <clears throat> Why is my Instagram full of fitness women sipping on BCAAs? <laughs> oh, sipping on them BCAAs. Why do so many people who promote a fit and healthy lifestyle constantly refer to their BCAA consumption? It seems to be more popular than protein powder in the promotion of the lean, big booty physique. <laughs> Why do people keep taking it and does it help in any way? Is there a natural alternative for the effect that BCAAs oh well, claim to have. First, first sign, you're you're following all the wrong people. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. It's so, like the BCAAs are creating this this big, huge butt and skinny body. You Pic- know, pictures or didn't happen. It's yeah. it's something that, it's crazy that, uh, you know, the, the science supporting BCAAs has been around for a, a very long time. And I, I do notice a, a spike uh, in the last probably three to five years of the popularity of it. And I don't know if it was a specific study that came out or a brand that did really well. Oh, I know exactly. As, oh, you yeah. remember what it was? Yeah, that, I know exactly. That so, caused the spike? Yeah, so so branched chain amino acids, there's three of them. They're leucine, isoleucine, and valine. And in studies, they've been shown to accelerate wound healing uh, and to prevent muscle wasting in okay a low-protein environment. In other words, mm. if you're eating too little protein, supplementing with branched chain amino acids may prevent muscle loss. Now, how low? Uh, below what the FDA requ- uh, re- recommends for protein. So if you're anybody who works out at all, you're probably eating well above that amount mm-hmm. of protein. I'm not even talking about the 0.7 grams of protein per pound yeah, of that's body weight. The, that's for maximum results. People don't understand that. That's yeah. what, ex- elaborate on that point you just made yeah. right now because people don't understand the difference between the two. So studies will show that the, the upper limit for benefit that you'll get with protein intake is around 0.7 grams per pound of, of body weight for lean individuals. That means that's the most you can eat and get some benefit out of in studies. That doesn't mean that all of you will get benefit from eating that much. It just means anything more than that, studies show, is just extra protein is not doing you any benefit. Now, the the RDA recommendation for protein is much lower than that, and they give you a recommendation based on what your body needs. Now, if you're eating less than what your body needs, can branched chain amino acids potentially help you? Sure. But if you're eating adequate protein, it's a complete waste of fucking money. Total waste of money for branched amino acids, completely. Especially if you take a protein uh, powder supplement. Now, all of a sudden, branched amino acids, I'd say over the last five years or so, has gotten really popular. And I can point to a, one company in particular that I think really made this explode. There's a company called Extend. Uh, no, is it Extend? Ah, uh, shit. Extends is the boner pill. That's the boner pill. <laughs> no, no, it is Extend. No, no, no. I think it is Extend. Maybe Doug can look it up. Try looking up Extend uh, with an X. Um, it is. It's Extend. Extend BCAAs. I was right. Shit. And they, there are boner pills called Extend. Thanks, Adam. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. Um, they made, Random fact. They knowledge. made a branched amino acid powder that tasted like fucking Hawaiian punch. Like it tasted so good. Like yeah. incredibly good. And so people started drinking these things like crazy and you saw fitness celebrities drinking it and they drink it like throughout the day and they'd be like, you know, I eat my small meals, but then in between meals, I drink branched chain amino acids all day to maximize, you know, you know, the anabolic effect or whatever. Uh, no, it doesn't help you. And in fact, too many branched amino acids may actually promote a condition where you might actually start to feel depressed because it can start to cause problems with the neurotransmitter production in your brain. So, is there side effects from con- how much con- of that? Would, how much of that would you have to consume to get adverse? effects? If you're drinking branched chain amino acids all day, that's probably what'll end up happening. Oh wow! Yeah, if you're drinking, you know what's really popular in the in the bodybuilding community is to pour your your BCAs, and I know everybody pours more than the fucking daily dose, anyways. But even if you just did the daily, they just pour like in your jug of water. In your jug of water, wow. and they drink on it all. Day. I know that. Okay, yeah. it, it gives there you it flavored is. water, right? You right. got watermelon water, and they say, "Oh, this is good for for muscle building and fat loss." It's not. It's actually Branched amino acid. Look, I used to recommend them. I used to recommend them so because it was it was a go to for me. It was a go to. It is a total unless you're unless you're having a a day where you ate no protein or super super low protein and you did a workout, then it could probably help you. But otherwise, it's 
it's a total waste of money and time. Now you're seeing these people promote them on Instagram because they're getting some kind of a kickback to yeah, promote it. Paid. They know nothing about nutrition, biology, fitness. These are the same people that sell those fit fit teas. Yeah, you know, yeah. drink my tea, uh, burn yeah. body fat or whatever. Have my laxative tea. No, it's a total, it's a total waste, absolute total waste. Go go for adequate protein intake. That's that's pretty much it. Like you know, um, which it, the point that you made that I really like because the people that tend to drink BCAAs all day long or drink them, they're eating over the protein intake, <coughs> way know? more. In fact, they would probably do better by actually going down on protein for a day and maybe laying off anything like this for sure for a couple of days because they're constantly oversaturating their body with high protein. It's so things. silly. I mean, they're getting butt implants and they're taking like really high quality pictures that they're doctoring and people still fall for that shit. Yeah. You know, but it's just, it, we're, we're animals. It tastes you know? good, dude. It tastes good. <laughs> you know, I, you know what I, I have done before is, you know, I've used the BCAA when I was dieting really hard as like a something for me to sip on that had flavor. Uh, I remember yeah. using it like that, and I know a lot of people use it the same way too. It's just it tastes good, and that's what gets everybody. They they feel like they're getting flavored water, but it's the need. Yeah, again, it's a palate it's a need for flavor. Thirty five to forty dollar. Mm-hmm. You know, you know who would have been fun to talk to about this. I wish we would. This would be a great question. We could get better at like when we have questions like this, like to put a side note, Doug, in the notes of like, oh, next time we're hanging out with mm-hmm. um, Lane Norton. Like, this is what he did his oh, thesis right. on. Yeah. yeah, he did. Yeah, oh, Lucene, Lucene in Lucene. particular. Yeah, Lucene, that's his <clears throat> yep. so, expertise. He so gets all I, excited when you talk about <laughs> Lucene, too. So, right? so, by the way, the reason why I know branch amino acids can contribute to a, a kind of a depressed state is because I experienced it. So I, back when I had my wellness facility, I bought um, Extend uh, BCAAs, uh, uh, you know, powder. Yeah. And um, I drank it all day long. And it does taste really good. And I'm thinking, oh, shit, branch amino acids, reduce, uh, and I'm, I don't mean to pick on that company, by the way, it's it's all of them, right? Um, I thought, oh, you know, I'm going to be anabolic all day long if I just drink it all day long. I tried to, you know, create that logic or whatever. So I drank it all day long. And then I noticed like I needed more caffeine before my workout. I noticed I kind of felt mm. just a little down and I, I couldn't figure out what was wrong with me and what was going on. Meanwhile, I was doing research on all the supplements I was taking just because I enjoy doing that. And I started reading about how uh, the presence of branched amino acids inhibits uh, with tryptophan influx into the brain. Now, tryptophan uh, re- re- is one of the you know. Is the, that the, from uh, uh, Turkey? Yeah, you do get that in Turkey yeah. too. So it, you'll reduce serotonin levels in your brain. I cut my BCA intake and I started feeling uh, I started feeling better. So I actually had that side effect oh, of wow. feeling kind of shitty. From a supplement that was supposed to make you, you know, improve your performance or increase. Well, your knowing what we know now, do you see any application for this for anybody? You know, I I think if you're like a vegan, maybe, <clears throat> perhaps, yeah, maybe if you have low protein intake, or maybe if you're, maybe if you're like borderline overtraining, it might. There, there's some evidence to show that higher leucine levels are good, which which leucine is one of the amino acids and that is a branched amino acid. Maybe, but you know, it's one of those things. It's like increase your protein intake. You know what I mean? If that's the case, like you're going to get all, do you know how many branched amino acids are in 10 grams of, you know, like organified protein way, you know, yeah. way more than you get from a, a scoop of, well, know, wasn't there that company that basically took the like leftover whey protein and encapsulated it and made it into yeah. BCAs? Yeah. Well, no, those would be essential amino acids or, or, or essential amino acids. Amino yeah. Acids, back in the day right. I would buy these, uh, God, I don't remember the name of the company. I wish I remembered, but it was this big bottle, and of, all it was is like protein powder, dude, yeah, pills. Just little tiny bits of whey protein. Dude, it was it was a big old, it was a monster bottle of, and it was like amino acid five thousand or something, like three thousand yeah. amino acid three thousand, right? And I take these, and it said take ten of these. <laughs> Uh, ten of these, ten of these horse pills a day. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. I remember taking creatine. Yeah. Like, yeah. Right. Yeah. Remember, so, the, remember the uh, Evogen or yeah. not Evogen? The uh, what was it called? <coughs> not Evogen. Uh, I don't remember. It was an E. Fuck. What was it? I don't remember. This twin, twin lab was a big one. No, back no, no. Wait, 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 that was out of twenty four. The they were the oh EAS. E, no, yeah. no, no. It was it was uh, the the top line of Apex. It was their sports performance. Oh, I don't line. remember that. I don't remember. Oh, you don't remember no. that? Oh, that was their their methoxybolic, their DHEA. Oh, wow. They had cre- they had creatine, and they came in this bottle of pills, and you had to take ten of these fucking dry ass horse pills, dude. <laughs> dude, oh, so man. I bought I remember this. Remember doing that? face. No I, <laughs> I would buy this bottle, and it said it was a B. It was a amino acid three thousand, and it was three thousand milligrams <laughs> of amino acids in ten pills, and these pills were. 
Like they were, bro, they were fucking huge. Like, this is why I can swallow so many pills now. If, if you've ever seen me take supplements, I can take 15 pills at one time. It's because I practiced. I mean, you can deep throat. Man. I could practice. Pra- <laughs> if you can only see a picture, oh. it sounds like this right now. Yeah. I practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I, yeah. I'd have these huge horse pills and I'd take 10 of them. And then I realized, like I, I'd burp up, you know, after I took them, I'm like, God, that tastes like protein like what the fuck <laughs> and then i realized hold on a second wait a three, minute three thousand milligrams is three grams of protein i had three grams of protein like convert them in a bunch right of pills yeah. and that's three thousand milligrams of amino acids you sneaky son of a can bitch can you fucking believe that shit yeah. no here's the deal like if you want to reap the benefits of branched chain amino acids just take just make sure you have adequate protein from food if you need to supplement Get a high quality uh, protein powder without um, metals, like Organifi. Without heavy Organifi, yeah, that's that's. Right. Thanks, Adam, because <laughs> that study just came out, right? With the, right. how the protein powders had heavy metals. Organifi, you know, uh, they, they're actually, in fact, they're getting ready to send me mm, a report. Integrity. They're going to send me a report with. Uh, but even then, we, testing. even 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 being sponsored by Organifi and we rep them and stuff, we still would recommend someone go for food first. Of always. course, always, 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 always. Then, like the worst case scenario a protein powder then BCAAs no I no I don't see any purpose for them anymore. No no not at all I wouldn't recommend it just it's just if you want to spend money you know go for yeah. it otherwise don't I'm just putting hairs Peter Sarmiento can you build muscle or bulk on a keto diet Yeah you can but it's harder fucking way yeah. harder it's a lot dude. harder yeah. way harder yeah. I, I tried I, this hmm. I mean I re- remember do you guys remember when I was I was it was during competing time or right around there and after we went keto, I remember telling you guys, like, I, I remember how great I felt. And I was like, let's see if I can bulk on this shit. Dude, what did those meals look like? Oh, bro. Yeah, ma- so much fat. How many grams of fat? 400 grams. When you first said but that, like, I thought you messed up. Yeah. You then, actually were eating And you could that- like stomach that? Like, what What kind? Well, like, you, what? you start to get used to it, I think. Yeah. Yeah. You, and of course, they're broken up. This is why I always, when we go back and forth, we talk about the, oh, bullsh- like the bullshit meals, of meal timing yeah. and separating meals. It's like... I I my defense to that is I understand what it's like trying to consume 5,500 calories. You know what I'm saying? 5,500 calories healthy is fucking no joke. Jesus yeah. Christ! Good luck trying to do that in two meals what or were three. Your fat meals. sources. Calorie bomb. Well, th- now this is part of why I I didn't like, uh, and this is why I don't like ketogenic diet because when you start to limit your choices of foods, and then you also have aesthetic goals like building muscle, and you need calories. Then what I found myself doing was going to these the butters, the creams, the oils uh, to to help boost the calorie yeah. intake because you can only eat so you many need fucking extra help. Yeah. You can only eat so many nuts. Drizzle you can only eat so much and avocado. I mean, if you eat enough avocado, it'll kick you out of ketosis. You know, so yeah. you, there's only so much of these some of these healthy fats that we talk about that can really give me enough calories and not say over satiate me. So it's tough without. And so I found myself going to the same go to six or seven. And I remember thinking to myself as I was like, seem to be scooping butter into everything all the time. I'm like, this can't be ideal for my body. You know what I'm saying? Like it just can't, this can't be He's eating big old blocks. of Yeah. Butter. So yeah. I, is my personal opinion on the, now you, when you were doing it though, and you were consuming 5,500 calories, it's still, it was still harder to gain size like that. Yes. Versus 5,500 calories with carbs, right? Yes. Mm. Yeah. 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 I, 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 on a, on a, on a level, a lot of levels too, like even just like consuming it, I remember, you know, and it reminded me of being a kid. Like when I was a kid, like trying to grow, it was so hard to eat all the time. Like I just, just wasn't hungry. And I remember trying to stuff my face. It reminded me of that feeling with carbohydrates. I don't need that, man. If carbohydrates, if I start my morning with carbohydrates, I'm hungry two hours later. I mean, it just, so there's been like physique athletes that have gone like keto their whole way through, but like, is there any bodybuilders that are just have been strict? Yeah. Keto? Well, okay. So uh, there's a lot of guys that, um, uh, what's his name? Jason Poston's a keto guy. Uh, and I know I don't know what he eats off season or not, but there's a lot of guys that do it to diet down. Now I'm right. a big fan of ketogenic on the way down. It's it's awesome because yeah. then it, it satiates you when you're when you uh, when you're eating like that instead of like cycling cycling carbohydrates. You're in for which I ran. I did a you're lot a, of. You're battling with appetite. Yeah, you're battling with appetite. You know, because well, I just imagine protein would be like overly consumed and would kick you out. You know, if like I was not paying super close attention, you would just end up consuming. A it lot would more if you protein. didn't do it right, right, right. So if you like, I mean, there, and there's idiots that are out there that you know. I mean, I was just talking to someone the other day that was talking about they're doing the ketogenic diet 
And I was asking like, you know, how, how long have they done that? And it was not even a couple of weeks, dude. It's just like, well, you haven't, you haven't even really given it a chance to, how can you measure? They changed the, the name in their Instagram handle. Yeah. Is, yeah. Is the or, or I've had, I've had people tell <laughs> right. me, I've had people tell me that they're doing, they're doing keto. They do mostly keto. And I go, well, what does that mean? Mostly keto. And they're like, well, you know, they'll have, the, they'll talk about their, their meals in the day. I'll, I'll have breakfast and lunch and this always keto or I'll have coffee, butter in my coffee type they're of They're just day. having, they're just low carb. And then, and no, and then, they, <laughs> then they have, then they have some shit for dinner and I'm like, Dude, you're not, like, what are you, keto like, for what? a minute? For like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah this no, that, window of my day. No, there's an yeah. important point there. There's ketogenic diet, which is where your body's producing ketones and then there's low carb, which is not always ketogenic. You can go low carbohydrate right. and mm-hmm. not be ketogenic and they, and it, it'll have some benefits for some people. And it's a lot of it has to do with the, the, the satiety, you know, effect of it where you don't feel like you want to eat, but bulking, you know, insulin is a, an anabolic hormone. In fact, it's the most anabolic hormone in your body and carbohydrates get your insulin to come up a little bit and that helps, you know, build muscle. Now, can you build muscle on keto? I've done it. It's just harder. I notice when I eat carbohydrates, I'm stronger, obviously, Mm -hmm. and I feel fuller and bigger, and I tend to build more muscle. I also, I don't know about if you guys noticed this, but I also, when I'm eating keto, I don't, and I don't, this, by the way, is not connected to building muscle, I don't think, but I notice when I'm eating keto and I lift heavy, I don't get sore. When I throw carbs in, I get sore. So I don't know if that has to do with the inflammation, Mm -hmm. but I don't get soreness. Or it could be correlated more with you. More strength. More strength and more better training sessions that in turn Mm -hmm. make you feel like you're- It's hard for me to say, but I notice it every single time. Because what I do now, here's what I do now. uh, I've been doing this for the past three months, and this isn't all the details, but this is kind of generally what I do is I do, I start, this is my third month now, I start with a 72-hour fast. Then after that, I go strict keto, and then leading into the next month or leading into my next fast, the week before that, I start eating carbohydrates. So it's almost like this cycling kind of diet. I like that a lot. And I'm noticing every time I do that, when I throw the carbs in, definitely get stronger, definitely put on more mass. In fact, if you guys pay attention, you'll see my body will change. Um, But I get that soreness, which is kind of interesting. But yeah, gaining on keto for me was very difficult because I just... I, it's almost like I couldn't eat enough, and then and, and it was hard to eat enough as well. So number one, I'd have to eat a lot, but then to eat a lot was more difficult because it's so and then what you start pick, and what you start to pick, right? Don't you feel that way too? Like I'm the the I was food just truck. eating so much. Like I eat this big fatty meat, and then it's like, well, I can't have any more protein. So now right, what? Yeah, three exactly. avocados, you know, what I mean, or something like that. Or, right, yeah, no, that's that's the part that I didn't like yeah. about it. But they've done studies on you know f- uh, on on athletes with keto, and if you're uh, like a like long steady state duration type uh, endurance athlete keto might be a good idea um but if you're using any kind of strength or explosive power the evidence is pretty conclusive carbohydrates will give you better performance and think of really you know carbohydrates is that fast burning Mm -hmm. dirty fuel and keto is keto is cleaner burning but it's not going to burn as hot so you got benefits of one but then you've got some detriments, and you've got benefits of the other, but some detriments. Ketogenic is, is very anti-inflammatory. Um, it's a, a clean source for the brain, but you're not going to get the performance like you'll get when you when you throw in carbohydrates. So, and I bet you there's exceptions to the rule too, though. You know, I bet you there's certain people that when they're keto, it, you know, probably because of their autoimmune issues totally. or things like that, yes. it makes their body feel so their, they respond better. Right. Way, so yeah. I guarantee there's somebody's listening right now. And they're like, "Oh, I fuck, I totally disagree with these guys. Fucking yeah. keto, I just build way more muscle." Well, there could be other things. And again, this is why I fucking hate the keto, the paleo, all the fucking yeah. names. It's like what probably happened with you if you if you responded really well to a keto diet with <sighs> building muscle is there was probably shit that was in your diet that was suppressing other things or fucking up the rest of your systems. And now that you've got that out, now all of a sudden your other systems that don't really play as a directive effect in building muscle as you think it does, does play some sort of a role. And now those things are operating better and now you can build muscle better. So I think that, you know, everybody's going to be different. If you find the keto, you feel amazing on it. Fuck, you might build more muscle on the ketogenic diet. I'm just telling you from my perspective, I thought it was really challenging for the amount of calories I had to consume. I saw the choices of food I was consistently eating. So I do something very similar with you, like you do, Sal, except for I don't do it in a spread out over a month. Mm. It'd be like a week like that. I love to just run a couple days where... I run like almost a, a ketogenic type diet and then I'll have an, a day where I introduce carbohydrates and I love to pay attention to how my performance feels. You know, oh, now. that's great. And uh, here's a here's a go-to bulk, keto bulking shake 
that I have made many, many times, and it, it helps because it gives you all the calories. You need extra calories when you're trying to gain, um, and it's high in medium chain triglycerides, which are uh, you know great energy sources in terms of fats. They're the 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 fastest burning fat, if you will, in terms of energy. So here's something you can do: buy a can of full fat coconut milk. So this is the this is the coconut milk that comes in a can. It's tons of fat. I think a can is like sixty something grams of fat, and something like sixty percent of those are medium chain triglycerides. Take that can, throw it in a blender, throw in I don't know, six to eight uh, egg yolks um, and, you know, uh, ca- uh, throwing caution to the wind, of course, uh, you know, uh, nobody, people don't recommend eating raw eggs. I did it all the time. So this is what I used to do. It's up to you. But I'd throw in like six or eight egg yolks. Then I'd throw a scoop of like protein. So like today I would use uh, Organifi protein in there and then I'd blend it up and it was this super high fat with some protein and cholesterol shake that I would have. Uh, post workout, or I'd have it, you know, during the day or something like that, and it was a great mass building shake with a lot of calories. And then Ben and Jerry's, <laughs> <laughs> yummy. Next question is from Crescenti. What aspects of your careers do you find the most fulfilling? <clears throat> oh, there's a lot. Ooh. Yeah, there's a this lot is, that this I find. is going to go down sentimental road. This, there's a lot that I find fulfilling about what we do. So I can I could list. 15 things off the top of my head. Yeah, but, but what's the first thing most, that comes to yeah, mind? What's most fulfilling you think? Uh, the first thing that comes to my mind is working with you guys. That's just being quite Aww. honest. Yeah. I, give you I a mean, hug. when you, the kind of character you have to develop to, to work with these assholes. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great comeback. <laughs> I like that. No, 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 no. Uh, you know, <clears throat> here's the deal. You, if, when you're surrounded by, uh, by, by people who challenge you to be a better version of yourself, um, you, you, it's, it can be hard if you're not a growth-minded individual. But working with Adam, Justin, and Doug, and e- even the you know other people on our team like Taylor and Katrina, everybody is this high-performing, um, uh, just exceptional individual in our own right. Like n- n- any one of us isn't perfect at everything, but any one of us is exceptional at a few things. And when you work with people like that, if you're growth oriented and if you're somebody that always wants to perform well, when I'm on a team, I never want to, I always want to be one of the better performers. So it's always going to push me to be better myself because I don't want to, you know, and all of us share that, right? None of us mm-hmm. would want to be like the worst person on the team. We all try to push ourselves. So working with a bunch of fucking, you know, studs and champions pushes me to be a better version of myself. I've changed more in, in positive ways in the last in the last six months than I did in, you know, five years of my previous life. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I'd say for sure that's the most fulfilling thing. Like I come to work and I know every day, every day we're going to have compelling conversation. Imagine that. Mm -hmm. Imagine if you got the opportunity to go to work and I mean, we've all had those compelling conversations, right? Maybe you're at a party or maybe when you first met your boyfriend or your girlfriend where you just sit down and you just you know, you talk for an hour and at the end of it, you're like, wow, that was really compelling and I'm a different person now from it. Well, that fucking happens weekly. Yeah. Like every single week, there's some conversation I have with, with these guys and I leave and I'm, I'm just like, wow, that was, that was crazy. I, you know, talking for me is my favorite way to think and I need somebody to bounce it off of versus than just myself and being able to have individuals like, you know, like the people I work with now, um, it's just been for, for by far my most fulfilling thing. And I honestly, although I love what we do because I, I love the integrity of it and I, and the, the purpose and the why, uh, behind what we do. And I love fitness. I feel like I could do anything with this team and I'll always feel fulfilled. Like I feel like we could do almost any business, even if it was a business I wasn't into and it wouldn't be as enjoyable as it is now, of course, but I feel like i still would grow at a very, very Dude, fast pace. I'm so glad that you went that way and not the obvious answer. I think that mm-hmm. what you're supposed to say, right? Which is no doubt in my mind, uh, the amount of people that we're reaching and we're helping now is extremely amazing. It's like, and it's multiplied by a hundred times compared to everything that I experienced over the last, you know, 15 years of being a personal trainer. Like the amount of people, lives that we're touching now, it's so rewarding. And the amount of DMs and the people that we meet, like that's amazing. But if I'm being completely honest, like what's the most fulfilling for me uh, is the business aspect of it. Uh, I love to be challenged and I love to be a part of building something. And this by far is not only the biggest thing, but has the potential to be far greater than it already is. And 
I just I love that. And I thrive on the challenge of it because, you know, like Sal says, every day, he talks about every day as coming here and having these compelling conversations. And I 100% feel the same way too and would totally steal that answer. But I also thrive off of the, the difficulties of uh, managing and running something as big as this is, has become. And it's anytime I find myself getting frustrated about it, because absolutely I have those days where I walk in, I'm like, fuck, you know what I'm saying? I feel like we're, we didn't get this done. This, that, yeah, like I yeah. had, I had this moment where I take a deep breath. And I'm like, fuck, this is why you love this, Adam. Yeah. If it was fucking easy, anybody would be doing it. Boring. It. Yeah, it'd be oh, boring. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, you guys stole the best answers. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I, <laughs> I, I totally agree. Like I, I immediately, the, the knee jerk reaction is of course, it's like just the feedback in, in people's lives that have been affected by w just us having conversations. Like what? That's, that's, that trips me out. Like sometimes I'll think about that and I don't know, I don't know these people, you know, some of them I do and I've actually met in person, but you know, for the majority, it, they live in a totally different part of the world and right. that, that trips me out. But like literally for me personally, um, it's, I've never done anything this difficult before, you know, and it's, it's, but I've never simultaneously had like the most enjoyment you know, at the same time, which, which it, it, it's crazy. Cause it's, you know, I've, I've built whatever business I've done before has always been a process to me to create more time for me to be, you know, creative or like create space, you know, away from work. And I, I now I'm doing the opposite, you know, I'm trying to create more space for me to, to work and be, a, you know, you know, contributing more and doing more because it's such a monster, you know? And, and so, and meanwhile, for me, like it's, I feel like I'm treading water every day. And sometimes like, like you, you said, Adam, like it, it, it just, it gets at you and you like rage and you're like, ah, I can't like, why, why can't I tackle these things? And but then you realize like, wow, you know, this is a challenge and uh, I'm getting better. And I see myself improving like I've never improved before mm -hmm. uh, with balancing my life, with creating better relationships, with, um, you know, just understanding how to operate at a different speed, it, which has been so fucking challenging. But man, it's been exciting. Oh, I fucking love that. Oh, dude. it's crazy. Yeah. It's cr Imagine this. Like, if you're listening right now, think of it this way. Think about people that you know on social media or, you know, whatever, YouTube and, you know, people that are, you think are just compelling, like individuals in your space or whatever. And you're like, man, I wish I could just sit down and have a conversation with that person. Like, how awesome would it be to sit down and talk to whatever person it is that you're enthralled by and be able to ask them whatever you want. Well, I get to fucking do that for my job. Are you kidding me? Like there, I could, I could say with full confidence that at least 80% of the time that we talk to a guest, it's just not always, I'll be honest. There's, there's, there's a 20% where I, I, a guest leaves after we do an interview and I'm like, well, I got nothing out of that. But, <laughs> uh, but a majority of the time, it has happened. Yeah. It's, it has happened. But a majority of the time there's like one or two, like big things that I get out of that conversation. Oh yeah. Like how crazy is that? And, and, and I'll, I'll repeat it. You know what I mean? You know how many things that I say mm -hmm. now that I've heard from other people that I've had a chance to have a conversation with? It's those nugget bombs. It's those, it's those <laughs> fucking nugget. Yeah. It's those absolute nugget bombs. <laughs> now, <clears throat> of course, of course, getting the messages and I get, I, we get a lot of them now where somebody says, God, you know, the information that you presented with me, has really changed my life, or yeah, I just had a message the other day from uh, this 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 guy who who wrote me this long message. I'll, I'll give you the short breakdown, but he'd been working out for a long time. Thought he was a hard gainer, skinny kid, and you know I totally identify with that, right? Because that was me when I was younger. Took lots of supplements. He said he spent over one hundred fifty dollars a month on supplements. Um, was doing all these crazy routines. Was force feeding his body. Um, didn't wasn't gaining strength. Wasn't doing anything. Then he went to MAPS Anabolic. So he was going to the gym six days a week, did MAPS Anabolic, was now going to the gym three days a week for the foundational workouts and then doing trigger sessions on the off days. Uh, he changed his nutrition so he was no longer eating you know, two grams of protein per pound of body weight. No joke. This guy was taking like three to five protein shakes a day along wow. with food. Damn. Cut that way That's down. A job. <clears throat> Cut that way down. And he's like, he goes, Sal, I don't know how this is possible. And it's it, the reason why he thinks it's crazy is because it, 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 it shattered his previous belief system, right? 
He goes, I don't know how this is possible. He goes, I've gained 10 pounds of muscle. He goes, I've added 50 pounds to my squat. I've added 80 pounds to my deadlift. He's like, I'm leaner. He's like, this doesn't make any sense, but thank you for you know providing this information and giving me this opportunity to learn these different things. He's like, it's completely changed my life because he was this insecure kid who thought you know, he had, you know, poor genetics and just couldn't build muscle. And when you hear something like that, you know, when you hear it enough, you know, kind of, you kind of, oh, that's cool. It's another good story. But I, I stop and remind myself like, man, I remember when, when I was that kid, like how crazy that would have been for me mm-hmm. if I had listened to a podcast or whatever, gotten some information. And then it actually worked. And it worked. Right. You know, I remember every time I did something different that really worked, how groundbreaking it was for uh, me. Yeah, that was like a staple in time. You're like, it, like you go back to that immediately. But it was always a one piece at a time. It yeah. was always like, oh, this little piece here, I don't need to eat small meals. Oh, this little piece here, don't go to failure. Oh, right. this little piece... But this kid got to get all of it at once. Yeah. Like he went from doing all this shit that was wrong to doing all the shit that was right, and it just Here's blew the his cornucopia fucking, of truth. <laughs> and it blew his mind. Right and his head. I am uh, extremely humbled because you you also experience this when you read something like that. Your ego wants to be like, oh, I'm so cool. Like I I'm changing this. You know, I'm giving this great information. You know, but for me, it's more humbling. Like I look at it and I go, holy shit! Like this. Like I got to do that. Like I got to impact this kid and I, I feel like I'm not worthy and so I almost want to give the kid a bunch of free shit you know what I mean I, I message him back I'm like hey man thanks for you know for for following the show and you know listening to what we say and considering you know some of the advice that we give and stuff like that so that's also extremely uh, oh, fulfilling dude, it's crazy it's it is extremely fulfilling <laughs> and it, it reminds me too of one another I talked about earlier in the episode about go to with music when I'm feeling down another go to and this has been a hack for me is just in the last three years because that's all we've been doing this is I read the iTunes reviews. Oh, yeah. Dude, nothing will make me feel fucking good yeah. like that does because people, it's the most, I don't know what we're up to in reviews now, Doug. We're, I know we're over, well over 2,000 five-star reviews. <clears throat> and some of these people have just, and I, I want everyone to know, like I fucking eventually read all of them. Like Sometimes I'll, what I do is I'll go in spurts where I don't read them for a, a while and then I go and I'll just, I'll sit there for two hours, dude. Oh, I got a lot just, of catching up to do. And go through and I'll read them and I'll get fucking emotional, dude. Just totally. overwhelmed from joy and stuff like that because of this because of the impact of that. So, hundred percent. I mean, but it, I just didn't want to share that with everyone because of the fact that I think that's, that's an the, obvious one. Yeah. It is the obvious one. I think yeah. it's the boring one. I think I think the other ones tell such a, a, a deeper story of each of us. So I'm so glad you went that way, Sal. Instead of mm-hmm. giving the obvious answer of how fulfilling <laughs> it, it obviously is to do that for people. Next question is from Captain Tanny ABC. Is weightlifting beneficial for female hormone production and balance? just as it is for male hormones such as testosterone? Or can it be detrimental? Oh, it's beneficial. Uh, yeah, oh, so n- there's no form of exercise that comes close. Would you argue, Sal, that it's more beneficial for a female than a male? Uh, I think it's equivalent. I mean, you think both. it's equal? Yeah, mm. I think it's both. I think, I mean, in, in because of because men, here's the thing. I like, think of it this way. I think It's of, more uh, crucial to, to I do think, it yeah, now for long term. I would almost right, argue that a female would be just because overcome. they have so much more going on hormonally with them between having a, a baby, a period every single month, that strengthening. Birth control. Yeah. Yeah. I would argue. Yeah, I, would I argue, could see that argument. Right. And I could also see the argument that men, uh, and it's it's much, much less today than it was you know, 10 you know, or 20, 30 years ago, but men tend to, if you look at all the jobs that involve a lot of activity, those tend to be dominated by men. Um, or women tend to be more sedentary uh, than men do in that per- particular regard. So maybe there's more benefit in, in, mm. as far as that's concerned. But there is no form of exercise at all that comes close to the hormone balancing benefits of resistance training. Nothing. Nothing is anabolic like resistance training. All of the forms of exercise, I mean, they can be restorative. They can be catabolic, right, because they burn calories. If you do cardio, are you going to build some muscle doing cardio? Well, I guess if you're super sedentary, like all you do is sit down all day long and then you start, you know, going on walks and stuff like that, you'll build a little bit of muscle, but not much. Like nothing com- nothing comes close because for your body, in order for your body to adapt to resistance training by building muscle and getting stronger, it first has to create a more optimal hormone Profile it has to signal the hormones to do what they're supposed to do. So it balances things out in a way that no other form of exercise can do. It, it helps. Ba- look, it helps 
blunt the insulin response or at least make your body more sensitive to insulin. It's like the more muscle you have, the more storage capacity you have for glycogen, the the more you're going to be sensitive to insulin, the more efficient and effective you are going to utilize your testosterone. And for women, estrogen and, pro- and progesterone balance becomes more apparent. Resistance training should be, pro- by the way, proper resistance training because if you over apply it or do too much intensity or work out too then hard, it can be detrimental. Do the opposite. Sure. Right, right. Then you, if you over train, then you're over training. But if you do it right, what it's going to do is it's going to balance your body out. It's going to make it more anabolic. Um, you're going to am- amplify your metabolism. One of the one of the number one comments I I get from I used to get from clients uh, when they would first start lifting weights, especially women and especially older women was that their libido would increase from lifting weights. I used to get that all the time. That was like the most common Booyah. side effect that I would that people would tell me. And the older women were also almost embarrassed to tell me. And I'm talking about advanced age, like women over 60. Yeah. Inevitably, almost every single time, I would start lifting weights with a with an over 60-year-old woman, and inevitably she'd come to me, and I would well, always that's ask. That's part of health. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Know, it's like, yeah, it makes perfect sense that, that you know, that would raise, uh, as the hormones are optimally balanced uh, going through that process. Dude, I would always ask them, every time I'd start training a client, I'd ask them, like, how do you feel? And then I'd dig deeper, like, how do you mean? What, how does this feel? How does that feel? And I'd dig deeper, deeper, deeper. And then after about, this was always around the two or three month mark, they'd get a little embarrassed. And I'd say, well, why, why are you smiling? Like, well, I, I am noticing some other changes. And then I would, I know what they're talking about. So I'd say it for them. And I'd be like, yes. are you noticing any changes in libido? And they'd look at me and be like, is that normal? I said, well, yeah, it happens to everybody. And they'd laugh and be like, no wonder my husband's so happy that I'm working <laughs> out because my libido is increasing. Well, and right. psychologically, you know, they're in a place where they're working on their body. They're feeling better about That's the themselves. other side of it. Like, I mean, it's all, yeah, it's all a part of the process. <laughs> so it's, it's very important. Plus, you know, to overcome, you know, later on, like, uh, you know, osteoporosis, osteopenia, these types of like uh, conditions that, uh, you know, are a concern. Like it's, we're being proactive in uh, building up, you know, enough muscle so that way it's going to carry you into, you know, your later years. I was going to share a story along those lines. Only it, it would connect me to a sixty-year-old lady, so I don't know if I want. <laughs> I don't know if I want to share my personal story. I think you need to now. Yeah. You, you had a gilf? Is no, that, well, uh, so I mean, uh, so I'm on. I, I'm technically. Uh, I'm two days, two days, two foundational days in, and one trigger day in of lifting consistently right now. Right, so we're literally like on day three of consistency. I saw you list. You, you put your workout the other day on your. Yeah, day. so I'm, and I promised everybody I'd start. Detail, dude, your body's yeah. changing fast. Oh, thank you. You were, you were, in a, you were. I, I mean, you were obviously you have the muscle memory because you you're, you've been super muscular in the past yeah. and you are super deconditioned. Yeah. Your body's ch- responding really fast. Like your face looks different. Oh, really? Yeah. You think so? Yep. Yep. So I last night had incredible sex with Katrina last night, and and I think like. Uh, and we always have. I feel like I need to go like, woo, woo, woo. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. But this this last like, I mean, fuck, it's been six months now of me going through all this. Um, nothing has. I mean, all I've been doing the juve, I've been doing the sauna, I've been and I've been sharing all that, and I've been telling people like, absolutely, I'm noticing little benefits from here and there from everything I'm doing. Fucking nothing. And <laughs> I told you, that nothing, nothing yeah. compares, bro, to the I, two weights. days of squatting. That's all it took, man. And all of a sudden, I felt like my libido just through for the first time in six months. I can honestly say, like, the, the previous sex that we've had in the last six months has been more me, like, having to, like, mentally prep myself. Like, I have a partner that this is very, very important to our relationship. Like, if I can't fucking rally for the team three, two to three times a week right now, like, I'm going to be dealing with a whole new problem, right? So, I got to get in the right space yeah, for that. People some, don't realize some how of the soldiers. You need, I mean, people don't realize how big of a challenge that could be. Fucking a, it's a, a challenge, yeah. and, and yeah. it's even more when you're overthinking it because you can't because you're going through all that. So, all kinds of a mental fucking warfare with all that. So, it's already been like a, a, a super challenging thing that I've been going through, and then. So for me, it's last night to feel like this drive towards her without like having to prep myself and mentally. You like initiated it. And yeah, then, yeah, yeah. So and of course that's why it was like incredible sex and stuff like that. And so I and I, I can't stress that enough that you know all these things that I'm doing and all the benefit health benefits that uh, I definitely agree that you can get from all these herbal supplements and the and the red lights and all that stuff like that. But she, if you're doing all that and you're not fucking strength training, you're you are missing the fucking the biggest 
rock of them all by far like and this has been this has been proven to me over and over with myself and with yeah. clients and i guess i feel more passionate about it right now because of what i've gone through to see it at this extreme level and it, it's like it could be it could be life-saving for me like i'm in such a better mood just in the last the great equalizer. two days because I'm, I'm getting it i'm getting to move again you know just even just walking for i walked for two miles that was a big milestone for me <laughs> it, was, it was like walking for two miles is such a big deal and shit but I, I think that's so important that, you know, when if you're somebody who is one battling with stress, you know, battling with depression, if you if you think you have a low, you know, testosterone, I mean, you go to the the well first, which is get to the fucking the, the base, the big rock, the the strength training first, and then you can start compiling all these other tools to muscle help. is like armor. It's like your armor and it protects you from, you know, damage to you from the environment, from your from your diet, you get away with a lot more with your diet when you have more muscle. Uh, it helps balance out the hormones because you have to be anabolic in order to build and support all of this muscle. It makes you move better, so it's your armor for if you fall or for for mobility. So, I mean, I, you know, I've, I've said this several times. I'm going to say it again because I want it on record several times because this is going to happen at some point. I guarantee it. But the recommendations that the, we currently give people for exercise. Uh, or at least what the government says, or, or what what doctors will say is thirty minutes of, of daily vi- vigorous cardiovascular activity. That's so wrong. Right now, it's better than Backwards. nothing. It's better than nothing. Yeah. But that's so wrong. The foundation should be resistance training by far. In the context of modern lifestyle, where we have access to highly palatable foods twenty four hours a day, and we're sedentary because our lifestyle just demands to be sedentary. You drive everywhere. You sit down all day long. Having more muscle is the remedy. It is now. There's a lot of things you need to look at. Of course, your health is comprised of all these different factors. But resi- if you're looking at exercise, and you don't need to be a bodybuilder at all, not not at all. In fact, if you just lifted full body properly, like two to three days a week, and this is once you get in the in the rhythm of things and you're more advanced, you're gonna get everything you ever want out of that. And in fact, I can train an advanced you know, strength builder just three days a week. I can, MAPS Anabolic is three days a week, right, in the gym. If you, you need to make resistance training the absolute foundation of your workout routine. And then you can throw in all the other things that you like to do if you want to do yoga, you want to do your cardio, you want to do your Pilates or whatever, but make that resistance training the foundation because nothing is going to balance out your hormones, nothing's going to set your body up to burn body fat, nothing's going to protect you from dementia or age related, you know, bone loss or mobility loss, like resistance training. It should be that should be the form of exercise that we recommend to everybody and it will be. I think it'll happen in the next 10 years because the studies are starting to come out, right? Like we just had uh, Max uh, Lugaveri on the show and he was talking about how resistance training is like one of the best things you could do to prevent age-related dementia, more so than other forms of exercise. And this mm. is it's it's just the best form of exercise that you could possibly do, or at least it should be the foundation. And in terms of balancing hormones, I can't think of a single form of exercise that is better. Oh, man. I, this is, too, this is what motivated us to do the, the Mind Pump 30 on our Mind Pump TV, the YouTube channel. If you guys have not gone over to the YouTube channel, subscribe. Make sure you guys go over there. I mean, we're dropping uh, stuff in there all the time. <coughs> and that was our motivation was to, okay, if we had somebody who is – you know, just the average Jane or Joe that hasn't really put a real workout regimen. They haven't really followed any sort of, uh, you know, weight training. They've always done the yoga type class or Pilates or, you know, walks and jogs or running, but they've never really tried to strength train. And what's kept them from doing that is maybe fear of the unknown or not knowing how to do these exercises or how to design a program. We, we broke it down really, really basic. And I think is really good for anybody who's just getting started in and introducing uh, them to squatting and deadlifting and movements like that. So, or, and, or if you just been out for a while, if you've been out for, I mean, it's, if you look at what I'm posting right now, it's very similar to the type of routines that we put on the uh, YouTube channel. It's a little more custom for myself and I'm going by feel and what I feel like doing that day. But as far as the volume that's in there. You don't need, man, if you've been off for a month or two and you haven't lifted weights, one of the biggest mistakes I always see people doing is just coming in, balls the wall, you know, and that's- You got to be smart about it. Yeah, be smart about it. Yeah, because over, if you do, if you do it wrong, it'll do the opposite. (laughs) You do it wrong, you're going to lose muscle, you're going to damage your metabolism. So make sure you have a good plan. Uh, Make sure you're, you're, you're smart about it. I would err on the side of less, not more. So if you think, you know, to yourself like, oh, should I do a, you know, 10 sets or should I do five sets? Like start with the lower one 
and take it from there and see how your body responds because you want to do the least amount of work to elicit the most amount of change. That's your best bet. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.